if your IP camera just lost the video during the lighting after storm. Probably the camera is damaged by the surge. I know the camera is getting hit but the lighting is quite rare. But still there's chance the whole system will get the surge and damage the IP cameras. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up the equipment to prevent from the surge. Before we jump to the video, I would love it if you can click the like button below. It really helps with the YouTube aggregator and it will make my life more easier. Alright, now let's move to the demonstration world and see how to set up the equipment to prevent from the surge. This is a very typical IP camera system. Here we got the IP camera. This is the PoE switch. This switch not only provides the data exchange, it also supplies the power for this camera. You see there's no need for power source next to the camera. The network video recorder is connecting to the camera. The camera is live now. And this is how the search get into the system. When the lighting hitting to the ground, it will spread to the whole area. And this is the KFIE, it's the couple cable. The cable could observe the search, and the search could travel both ends. It could go to the camera, and also the PoE switch, and even the network video recorder. So in order to stop the search, the simple way is we can add the search protector both ends. These two are very typical search protector. This is the waterproof type. Usually we will set the search protector just next to the camera. And this is the ding ray tight. We can use this search protector close to the PoE switch. Okay, now let me take a few minutes to set up the system. The setup is pretty straightforward. I have put the search protector on both ends. The device is we should place the search protector as close to the device as possible. So we can stop the search from the cable. Now let's take a look at the search next to the PoE switch. There's two ports on the search protector. One is the input port, another is output port. The input port will connect the cable from the PoE switch, and the output port will connect the cable from the camera. There's one important cable, this is the grounding spot. We have to ground this spot, otherwise the search protector cannot work in 100%. The reason is the search protector will catch the search from the cable and it will introduce the search to the ground through this cable. So if you just don't ground this cable, the search protector cannot release the search. It may need to handle it or it could damage the search protector. Okay, now let's move to the edge. This is the waterproof type. It's quite similar. There are also one input and one output, but in this case, the input port will take the cable from the PoE switch and the output port will connect to the camera and we also have one grounding spot. Also, we need to ground this spot, otherwise it will not work 100%. We need this grounding spot to introduce the search to the ground. Alright, the setup is simple. How about if we have second camera? Do we also need to have the same search protector on both ends? The answer is yes, because the second link also could get the search. Then we need to install two search protector. It can stop the search from the cable. Here we have the dim ray tight. This is the dim ray search protector. It's quite convenient to set this search protector next to the network video recorder because we can just snap the search protector and add the search protector easier for second link. And the grounding spot. We can daisy chain the grounding spot from the search first search protector to the second search protector. Eventually, there's only one grounding spot. There's no need to ground all the search protector. There's one thing people always missing. They're just missing to ground the device after they install the search protector. You see, here's the thing. The search protector cannot stop 100% search from the cable you only can stop about 90%. So there's always 10% search you pass through this search protector and just land to the device. It depends on how much from this 10%. So it may still damage your equipment. That is the reason why it's so important to ground this device. 
from this network video recorder, this is the grounding spot. And we also have grounding spot at the rear of the PoE switch. You can put all these grounding spot together and send to the ground together as this search protector. That will be okay. And for the camera end, usually you don't have the grounding spot for the camera. The reason is the camera is working under a low voltage. According to the URL specification, there is no need for a grounding spot while the voltage is less than 60 watt. So there's no way you can ground the camera if you don't have grounding spot for your camera. There's one last thing. Should we add the search protector to each of the camera? I think it depends on because there's cost involved. Let's say if, if you have the camera system, you have some camera which is quite expensive, such as a Thigma camera or Pentel zoom camera, or the camera is so difficult to replace, then you may consider using the search protector. However, if the camera is quite easy to reach or touch, then you can just place it, replace it if it gets damaged, and the camera just costs you $20, we just can forget the search protector. It also depends on how often the lighting happens in your area. We got search because the cable, this is the copper cable, observe the search when the lighting spread to the area. You also can use the fiber optic cable. The fiber optic cable technically is the glasses. It will not observe the search. You can reference my another video how to use fiber optic cable to set up the IP camera system.